Okay, we're going to try out our cardboard arcade game. This is basketball. Malcolm's going to give it a try. We use the makey makey and scratch to keep track of the score. So he's got 30 seconds to make as many baskets as he can. And he'll make a splash sound every time he gets one in. Ready, set, go. Well, the time means game over. Dance time. And the score was one. Tough round, only got one. Okay, so this is Makerspace video number two. Uh, in the first video, we tried to make a ski ball machine with cardboard. And we're going to do another cardboard arcade game. We're going to try a basketball game this time. And we're going to do this one again because we did a cardboard arcade at school and some groups had trouble getting the Makey Makey to consistently keep score for them. So we're going to build a cardboard basketball game, use the Makey Makey and Scratch and get it to keep track of how many baskets we get. So here's the basketball game set up. So I just taped some cups onto a piece of cardboard cut the bottoms out and then we're going to use a golf ball and people will try to throw the ball into here and this is similar to what some groups did at school what they did is they had two pieces of tin foil on either side of their hoop and then the ball was wrapped in tin foil and when the ball fell through it was supposed to complete the connection and then the makey makey would keep score for them but uh, they just found that it didn't work consistently because the ball was rattling around and moving so fast through there. So we're going to try a different method. Um, with the ski ball, I wrapped the ball in tin foil and then I had a little ramp with two pieces of tin foil and the ball would fall through, roll down the ramp and connect two pieces of tin foil to create a circuit and then make the makey makey work. And that would probably work with this, but I want to try something different this time. So instead, I'm going to use a sponge and use that kind of like a button. So the idea will be that, and I'm going to use a golf ball so it has enough weight. The golf ball is going to come through, hit the sponge and squish it and push together two pieces of tin foil. And then that'll trigger the makey makey, which will code to keep score for us. And also notice that we've got Iron Man on here. My son decided that our cardboard arcade need to be, needed to be superhero themed, so we've colored and cut out a superhero for each game, whichever superhero we think would be best at that game. Under each hoop, I'm going to put a little platform here. There's tin foil on the platform, and then the idea is I've got this sponge. I hollowed out some of it and put a piece of tin foil here. It'll sit on the platform like that. The ball is supposed to come down through the hoop, hit this, and push the two pieces of tin foil together and then roll off so that the sponge can spring back and disconnect them. And I'm not feeling too good about this idea, but we're going to try it and see. I think this would work well with a game where you're physically pushing it yourself, but I'm a little nervous about this ball and if it's actually going to be able to push them together consistently, but let's give it a try. So I've hooked the Makey Makey up. Um, I've got it wired to the two pieces of tin foil, so one on the sponge, one on that little platform. And if I press here, you can see it's lighting up, so it's making the connection. Um, yeah, we're going to try it with a ball though and see if it actually works. So I've coded this so that if the connection's made, it makes a meow sound. And got a problem though. So if I drop the golf ball in, nothing. It's not making, it's not creating enough force downward to push the connection together. I made some repairs to the button. So I just cut some of the foam off the bottom so those two pieces of tin foil are closer together and it takes less force to push them together. And it seems to be working pretty well. I barely have to touch it and it'll make that connection trigger the makey makey 
if I try it out with one of these juggling balls. It seems to be working. I totally scrapped the button idea and have gone with something totally different. So it's a lot more complicated but seems to be working. So the way this is going to work is ball falls in, hits here, rolls down. As it rolls down, the weight of the ball rocks this forward and tin foil here touches the tin foil on here, completes the circuit. So how did I do this? So I've got my ramp here on a straw and there's a skewer through the straw so the straw can rotate around the skewer and then I put I just had pencil crayons around so I used pencil crayons glued them on the back so that's the counterweight to pull it back up when the ball's not on there and then these are our paint stir sticks here and here so let's try this out testing time Seems to be working. This design is <clears throat> overly complicated, which I don't really like, but it seems to be working. And the reason I think it's working is that it holds this connection long enough, so this is going to be connected the whole time it takes for the ball to roll down, whereas before it was just hitting and dropping off, and I don't think it was holding the connection long enough. And that's why it was having the problems getting the makey makey to run. So one of the issues I'm going to have with this though is you could miss a shot and it still could drop down and knock this and you'd score a point even though it didn't go through the hoop. So I'm going to work on a solution for that next. This is what I came up with to make sure the scoring device doesn't get accidentally tripped. So I just covered it with this ramp and this also will act to bring the ball back to the shooter in case you miss. So if I miss, ball rolls back to me or if I get it in, the ball rolls down the ramp and pops back out the bottom. Okay we're gonna build the code for our basketball game. So we're gonna use under our control we're gonna use an if-then block and it's going to be sensing if the key, the space key is pressed. So we're going to hook the space key up on the makey makey. So if key space pressed, then we can create a variable here to keep score. So let's call our variable score. Okay. If key space pressed, then change score by and I'll just make each basket worth, I'll let's just keep it as one. So every time you score, you get one point. So if key space pressed, then change score by one. Uh, we need a hat. So when the green flag is pressed, it'll start running this code. But we also need the code to be checking forever to see if the key space key is pressed. So this whole thing needs to be in a forever loop. There we go. So <clears throat> what's going to happen though is if I press the green flag and hold down space, the points go up like crazy. So there's already 175,000 points there. So after we change score by one, we're going to use a wait block. And I think we'll wait one second. So this will give time for the ball to get off of that little ramp thing so the connection can separate again. We also want when the green flag is pressed, if we go back to our variable under data, we want to set the score to zero. So every time you press the green flag, you're starting a new game and the score gets set back to zero. So if I press the green flag, score goes to zero. If I press the space key, I get one point. Okay, so that's working well. And I might add a sound when you score. 
so that you know you got the points. So <clears throat> let's go into sounds. We'll go into the sounds library and try to find something. Nope, not that. So let's add this plunge sound. Since you just made a hoop, you just splashed it. So you plunged. So we go to our script, the play sound plunge. Change score by one, play sound, pl wait one second, actually we'll play sound plunge until done, change score by one, wait one second. So if I press the green flag, press space, there you go. So now, we also want to add a timer on here so that you have a time limit for the game. So when the green flag is pressed, we're going to repeat, we'll make it a 30 second game. So repeat 30 times. We need a new variable. And we're going to call our variable time. Okay, now for the timer, we're going to, when the green flag is pressed, set time to 30, 30 seconds. And we're going to get it to change time by one. every second. So it's going to wait one second, not change time by one, change time by negative one. So it counts down. And then once it gets down to zero, it's going to stop all the code. So let's test this out. So if I press the green flag, my timer's counting down. When I press the space bar, I get a point and I get the plunge sound. So there's two points. Three. Okay. Ten seconds left on the timer. The timer's at zero now, so if I press space, Nothing's happening, so the game's done. One thing I'm going to add to the game is a sound when the game's over. So I'm going to go sounds. Instead of stop all, I'm going to stop other scripts. So if we go stop other scripts and sprite, so it should stop this scoring. And then I want it to play a sound. So I'm gonna grab a sound. So at the end of the game, it's gonna play. It's gonna play this dance around sound. Okay, so if I start my game, so I think I'm going to take the wait one second block out because this play sound plunge until done is actually kind of acting as the wait block anyway. So I'm going to get rid of that. If I test it out, when I press the space bar, I just get one point at a time. You can't score a second point until the plunge sound is done. So I think that'll work well with the basketball game. So we're going to try out the basketball game. I showed my designs that didn't work because um, I really find that with elementary kids, 
once they have a design in mind and it doesn't work, they really struggle with that redesign. So I wanted to show how I tried out a design, but I didn't marry myself to it. Once I found out it wasn't going to work, I scrapped it and went with something else. We're going to play the game now. So every time I get the golf ball in the basket, I should get one point and you'll hear that splash sound. And I also, with this challenge, I wanted to try and create a game with the makey makey where the ball didn't have to be conductive. So that's what we were going for here. So we'll start our scratch program and give it a try. Come on. There we go. All right, so I got six. Not bad. 